Hello readers, I'm Amy. I just recently did one genre in one week and I'm actually kind of in the mood to do it again. Um, I Last year I read The Break by Katharina Vermette. It's the only native author that I read last year, which is disappointing. I need to do better with that. But it's just been on my mind lately. Like that was such an amazing book and it's just kind of what I feel like I'm in the mood for. So gonna go with what my mood is genre wise. I did have several um, books that I put on hold at the library on, on my Libby app. Um, and I wasn't expecting to see most of them for a couple of weeks, but I have three native authors that I've already received from my holds. Um, if I get any more this week, I'll try to read those as well. But I also have my copy of Luis Erdrich's The Roundhouse sitting on my TBR shelf. That was a book that I wanted to get to this year. So I guess that's just the mood right now. Come on, book. Okay. <laughs> so as of right now, I have four books that I'm going to try and read in a week or get to in a week or start in a week. Like I'm not gonna limit myself to this. If I don't finish a book at the end of the week and I want to, then I'll keep going. But I have The Roundhouse, which I believe is a sexual assault story. Um, I also, whenever I was trying to think of some books that I could read for native authors, I came across this article that was like native authors that you should read. And it had the name of one or two of their books, it had the premise of those books, and then it also had a sample of their writing. And while the premises of all of the books didn't exactly capture me, the writing was just stellar on a lot of those. So based on the writing, I chose Where the Dead Sit Talking by Brandon Hobson. I have Custer Died for Your Sins, an Indian Manifesto by Vine Deloria Jr. And then Braiding Sweetgrass isn't actually one that I've ever felt that interested in. Um, this one's on like the botany and science of indigenous wisdom of plants and everything. Um, and it's not one that's really captured my attention, but it's gotten so many good reviews. Like, I don't think I've heard a single bad thing about it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to try it. And it was immediately available um, whenever I was looking at it. The other books... I have the only good Indians on here, but that's going to be on hold for another 13 weeks. So I'll read that one later. But... Those are the four books that I have on hold right now. We'll see if anything else comes up this week, if I find any other books on here that I'm interested in. So yeah, I'm just gonna have a Native Authors Week. Let's see how this turns out. I'm I'm excited. I've been needing to do this for a while and I keep putting it off because like, oh, I'm in the mood for this kind of book. I'm in the mood for this kind of book. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just, let's just put the books on hold and when they come in, I'll read them. And I got so many at once. It's like, all right, one genre, one week. Here we go. Hello. So I've been terrible about keeping up for Native Authors Week. Um, I think the reading's just been really slow, so I haven't really had much to talk about. Also, apologies for the first clip in this. I don't know why I kept saying genre. Um, Native authors are not a genre. I think I just I have it said in my mind that I'm reading a genre in a week. That's like the idea behind the project, so I kept saying genre, but anyways, reading Native Authors for a week. Today is Tuesday. I started reading the Native Author books on Friday. Um, started off kind of rough. I, The first book that I read, or that I started to read, was Where the Dead Sit Talking by Brandon Hobson, and not into it at all. If you really like him as an author, great for you. I just was not having a good time. It started off interesting. You've got this kid in the foster system and then he's at this woman's house and he goes to use the bathroom and masturbates into the toilet with the door open while she's home. And I'm like, where is this going? And then, you know, you continue on through him living in the foster home. Everything seems to be going okay. And then he's hanging out with his foster sister who he thinks is really pretty. And she's like, I have to go to the bathroom. Do you want to watch? And it's like, I understand that you're outside and you're kind of like camping or hiking or whatever, but I I can't do this. Stuff like that in books just 
really grosses me out. And I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to read this. So rough start. <clears throat> then I started Luis Erdrich's The Roundhouse. This is also going really slowly. I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like, it's good writing. I do want to eventually read some more of her books. However, the material is a little rough for me right now. This is a book about um, a boy whose mom is pretty violently raped. We don't get a ton of details on the rape, but there is a certain aspect of of the attack that's brought up that really just gives me nightmares. Again, you don't have like details on it, but you do have a very good idea of what exactly happened and it's bad. And if you're curious to know what I'm talking about, please leave a comment down below and I will answer that comment just so I'm not spoiling people um, in the comments or in the description or anything. So it's going slow, but I am enjoying it. It's a really, it's, it's an important book. Um, not quite a third of the way through it yet. And then I have been listening to, let me open up my phone here. On Libby, I'm listening to Custer Died for Your Sins by Vine Deloria Jr. This is one of those that I found in that article I was talking about that seemed to have like really good writing. So I got it on the audiobook and really liking it. I don't know that I would be able to read it physically. Um, but in reading it, it's it's a history book. It's an Indian manifesto. And I am really enjoying it. And I'm starting to think if I want to read more history... That's a nonfiction isn't typically something that I listen to, but history nonfiction seems to be working well for me as an audiobook. So in the future, if I choose to read history books, I might just go for the audio because I don't think I could read it as a physical. But this book is really, really good. There's it it talks about so many aspects of Indian life. And I'm saying Indian because that is how the book or what the book calls them, and I know everyone kind of has their own particular phrases that they like to use. I myself prefer to say Native American, but this book says Indian, so I'm just going to say that. There's so many different aspects. I, I don't actually know what the Bureau of Indian Affairs is or what they do, but apparently they're really hated. Um, there's a really awesome chapter on anthropologists and how their research kind of interrupts Indian life. Um, and then there's this section that's, I swear this chapter is all comedy. There's like this Indian that drinks some sacramental wine and he's like, why didn't everyone tell me that Christianity felt this good? And then all the Indians go to church the next week. Like there's some really funny little stories and stuff in it. I like it. I highly recommend it if you want to learn more about Indians and their history and how they're affected by the systems right now. Um, speaking of the systems, I am currently reading The Outside Circle. So I'll start off with this. Last year, I read Katharina Vermette's The Break, and I really loved it. Um, and the only other books that I'm really seeing by her are her Pemmican Wars series, which is graphic novels. So I picked up A Girl Called Echo, and it was fine. I gave it three stars, mostly because the artwork was really good. It just didn't... I know graphic novels are, like, the same price as bigger books because, you know, you're paying for a lot of artwork. It's really time-consuming stuff to do. So in my personal experience, not that I have a lot of experience... But a lot of the graphic novels that I see are more comic book sized where there's just not that much material to them. And that's what I came across in this book was there wasn't a ton of material to it. So I didn't have time to get invested in the story. And you can kind of tell what's going on, but it also seems a little unfocused. You're not really getting background or anything. But on that page on Libby that had Katharina Vermette's books, there was one at the bottom that was called The Outside Circle, which is another graphic novel. This is by Patty Labucane Benson. I'm hoping I'm saying that name correctly. This one is really good. This is definitely a longer graphic novel. So A Girl Called Echo is about 50 pages. The Outside Circle, it says 128 on Kindle. 
And this one's really amazing. It's, you have this aboriginal, by the sounds of it, I want to say he's living in Canada. I want to say. But he's aboriginal and he's part of a gang. He gets caught up in a fight. He goes to jail. His little brother is affected negatively. Um, And the detail that's put into it. Like, not only is the artwork good, but, for example, there's this paperwork that is getting signed by a character. And the um, drawing zooms in to that paperwork that is being signed. And they wrote out all the words on that paperwork. And that paperwork is basically detailing, this is what you're signing away. This is how history has affected you and forced you to sign this and negatively affected your life. So it's like, it's not what the official paperwork would say in real life. It's more explaining the existence of the paperwork, which I think is an amazing detail. I highly recommend this. If you're into graphic novels and you want to look at a native author, please read The Outside Circle. I'm only halfway through it, but I've been invested since page one. This is good. And the artwork is gorgeous. So, like I said, today is Tuesday, so I'm hoping, hoping, by Thursday night, which will be the end of my week, I can finish the roundhouse. I'll finish the outside circle for sure. I have, like, an hour left and Custer died for your sins. I still have to start braiding sweetgrass, which, as I stated previously, isn't really a book that I typically think I would like. But it has so many good reviews, and it's a native author, and it's like, you know what? I'm going to go outside my my comfort zone and give this a read. So I will hopefully <laughs> update you again before Thursday, because I've been really bad about that. Also, sorry for the hoodie and no makeup. I am apparently a terrible insomniac and just got up like an hour and a half ago, and it's one o'clock in the afternoon, so... So I did not, in fact, end up recording on the Wednesday and Thursday of the week that I did Native Authors. Just wasn't in the filming mood, didn't have the makeup, didn't put on quote-unquote real clothes, just was not in that mood. And also had like a lot of work and school stuff to do. But anyways, I did manage to finish three books. Um, I talked about A Girl Called Echo, which was fine. I enjoyed it well enough. It was very short, which I think is why I finished it. Um, Custer Died for Your Sins. That was just this really funny history. Um, Again, I think going forward, I need to try history books as audiobooks. Um, It might be the one nonfiction so far that really works for me as an audiobook. We'll see how that goes. One thing I forgot to mention with The Outside Circle and what I tried to remember like when I finished the book, I'm gonna talk about this, is this kind of concept of tradition as healing. So one of the characters in the book is in jail for about a year and then afterwards he is released into this kind of rehabilitation program where it's for Aboriginal people and they get to do smudging and talk about their pasts and how they came to be where they were. Um, One of the scenes was in a sweat lodge where people are kind of like coming to terms with themselves or like seeing that kind of spirit animal part of themselves. It just, it was really cool to see this kind of tradition as a healing process. And the author of The Outside Circle sounds like they actually do this for work, like they have this kind of rehabilitation program, this mental health program for aboriginals where it's kind of reconnecting them to their roots. And I think that's awesome. That's a great example of something that we should do besides just incarcerating people all the time because mental health is great and something that we all need to work on. The Roundhouse, I did not finish. Um, That was my second reading by Louise Erdrich. I think it was kind of like Memory Police where it's like, am I really enjoying myself? And what am I liking? What am I not liking? So the memory police in my uh, one week, one genre for thrillers, I was liking it, but I wasn't sure why I was liking it. I decided I'm going to finish it later. The roundhouse, I ultimately decided I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it. It's not that I wasn't enjoying it. It's just I don't ever see myself rereading it in the future. I didn't feel like finishing it at that point. 
The Roundhouse, again, was a really, really slow book. And I think that's what's kind of holding me back into my slump is just if I'm reading a really slow paced book and I don't have time to read these huge chunks in one sitting, I just don't feel as invested in it. <clears throat> so the writing, the writing was good. The story was interesting, but it was slow enough and I was feeling slumpy enough. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to finish this. I'll try, I'll probably continue to try more of her books in the future, just right now is not the time for me. I am glad that I read as much of it as I did, but definitely not one of hers that I think I'm gonna ever feel like revisiting in the future, so did unhaul that. Um, Where the Dead Sit Talking, I already said that book made me feel gross, I didn't finish it. Braiding Sweetgrass, I started it, I DNF'd it pretty quickly. Again, that, it, it seemed like a very good book. It's a nonfiction book about sweetgrass, and it had a very poetic writing style that was really beautiful to listen to on audiobook. But it's like, while it was really beautiful, I didn't necessarily feel like I was gaining anything or learning anything by reading it. Not that I wasn't learning anything, but it's kind of like, the book on braiding sweetgrass was made for Native Americans rather than kind of a teaching tool for white people to learn about Native Americans, if that makes sense. Like the book didn't feel like it was written for my audience, for me as an audience. It felt like it was written for natives to whom sweetgrass is important. Um, really beautiful writing. Again, it's just not what I was in the mood for. It didn't feel like it was written for me and my reading taste, and that's, yeah, that's it. But I finished three books, pretty happy with that. Um, there are some books that I saw in my February anti-haul video that I'm working on that are by Native authors that are coming up in February that I'm actually really, really interested in reading. So we'll see if I can pick some of those up soon. That will be it for this, uh, not one genre, one week, one, reading native authors for a week. So please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I'll see all of you in the next video. Bye friends.